Extrusion and molding is found in the blow molding process, where plastic is continuously extruded into a tube shape and then clamped in a mold and blown into its shape with compressed air. It's a process that often operates in a shuttle movement with a set of molds. Each mold takes a turn grabbing a section of extruded tube, called a parison, and shuttling it to one side to blow it into a bottle shape, letting it cool, and then releasing it to be filled with product or shipped. Each mold alternates with a second mold doing the same thing for maximum productivity. The same blow molding process can also utilize multiple extruders for what is called co-extrusion. Co-extrusion is used to create bottles made up of multiple layers, and each layer possesses special characteristics like suitability for food contact, an outside color for brand awareness, ultraviolet light protection for long shelf life of the product, a layer of regrind for economical reuse of scrap, and many times barrier and adhesive layers are included to separate and bond the layers for a tough, cohesive bottle. A high volume form of blow molding uses many molds mounted onto a continuously rotating wheel mechanism. The extruder creates a hollow tube and as the wheel rotates, each of its molds will open, grab a parison from the extruder die, blow the parison into a bottle, allow it to cool, and then place it onto a conveyor, producing a continuous stream of finished bottles originating from that continuous flow of plastic from the extruder. These wheel machines can also produce co-extruded bottles containing layers designed to meet the needs of the product and to use reclaimed material for maximum economy and recycling benefits. The very popular sales of plastic bottles for carbonated beverages has created a unique process for blow molded bottles made specifically from polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. For PET blow molding, bottles are first created in a test tube shape, injection molded preform and then, in a separate operation, reheated and blown into their final shape. This two-stage process creates bottles that we, as consumers, know to be thin-walled, yet capable of containing gaseous carbonated beverages without losing pressure or exposure.